Dervalumab is a, an antibody that was developed to block the PD-1 pathway. It blocks this by binding to PDL1 on the tumor cell, um, as well as other cells that express PDL1. And that is how that is the mechanism of action. So by blocking the PD-1 pathway, it allows the immune system to actually be, remain activated and able to attack the cancer. So basically what we're doing is taking the brakes off the immune system. The PD-1 pathway is just one pathway that our body uses to control inflammation and control the immune system. And tumors co-opt that pathway. And so by blocking that pathway with an antibody like Dervalumab, it again allows the immune system to remain activated and attack the cancer. The reason why patients will benefit from receiving Dervalumab after actually responding to concurrent chemotherapy and radiation is really the improvement in progression-free survival as well as overall survival. We believe that Dervalumab allows a systemic treatment and also cuts down the chance of patients developing metastasis later on, including there was a decrease in the occurrence of brain metastasis in those patients who were treated with dervalumab after chemotherapy and radiation therapy as well. Dervalumab's side effects are really based on its mechanism of action. If we're trying to take the brakes off the immune system, we know that the immune system, while we want to, it to be directed towards the tumor, it can be directed towards normal tissues as well. So any side effects, um, I always say, say Side effects that end in itis, this drug can cause. Uh, so inflammation of any organ system. However, bad side effects, significant side effects that cause you to stop treatment are not very common. That ranges in the 10 to max 16%. Um, in general, we do expect fatigue uh, as a side effect to Dervalumab. Um, potentially cough if it's related to respiratory symptoms. Um, but in general, this drug is very easy to tolerate and did not, the uh, chance of side effects did not seem to be that much significantly different compared to uh, observation. Now certainly uh, inflammatory serious side effects, uh, particularly pneumonitis. Uh, pneumonitis can occur after radiation therapy called radiation pneumonitis, but Dervalumab can also cause pneumonitis based on its immune mechanism of action. Now there was not that much difference in the pneumonitis rate between the placebo arm versus Dervalumab arm, but roughly that difference was about 5 to 10 percent uh, difference or increase if you received Dervalumab, but in general it was not that significantly different. And in my mind I was surprised that there was not that much difference. But in general when you're treating with these type of drugs you do have to be aware that Patients can develop any inflammatory symptoms, um, and it's something that you need to continue to um, routinely monitor for. For patients receiving consolidative uh, Dervalumab, the general side effects compared to observation is really not that much different, particularly significant side effects. The grade three and four side effect rate was approximately not quite 30% in those patients who received Dervalumab versus approximately 26% in those patients who were followed uh, and treated with placebo. In general, again, uh, Dervalumab does not seem to add a huge amount of side effects after uh, concurrent chemotherapy and radiation therapy, but certainly do, you do have to monitor patients for uh, inflammation and uh, immune-related toxicities.